age of strife. Truth will not be recognized by people. With such events having gone on, the world revolves like a wheel. By the union of flowing water and the sun, the realm of desire is torn apart. The sky will be restored, and the world will commence therein, four castes and kings, sages and religion. The Vedas, devotion, charity, and law-abiding will proceed again, by narratives, legends, and so on, presented in easy prose. The world will be confused by, thus have I heard, and so on. Having died it deeply so nothing stands out, afterwards fade it. Will color the cloth with indigo, cardamom, and cow dung. The body distinguished by all garments has no marks of a religious leader. Let the yogi teach. This is the mark of the enlightened. Let him drink water filtered through cloth, and wear a waistband. There is nothing socially or morally objectionable about begging when done according to the rules at the proper time. He is born in heaven, and from heaven in two other human existences. A precious lord of the world of most excellent birth. A code of law governs the four continents like heaven. After governing the continents for a long time, it perishes due to greed. The golden age, the silver age, the age of uncertainty, and the age of strife. I and others were in the golden age, the lion of the Sakya in the age of strife. Siddhartha of the Shakya family, Vishnu, Vyasa, Maheshvara. There will be religious leaders such as these when I've passed away. Thus have I heard, and so on will be the teaching of the lion of the Shakya. Ancient history will be that of Vyasa. Vishnu and Maheshvara will teach creationism. This and more will happen after I've passed away. My mother is Vasumati my father the sage Prajapati. I am of the same lineage as Katyayana, dispassionate victor by name. I was born in Kampa, and so were my father and grandfather. Their name was Somagupta, being of the Soma race. Gone forth in observance of a vow. After imparting guidance expressed in a thousand ways I will pass away completely. Having consecrated Mahamati. Mahamati will give it to Dharma. Dharma will give it to Mekala. Mekala will lose it at the end of the age due to weakness as a student. Kasyapa, Krakachanda, Kanaka the guide. I the dispassionate, and all those others are victors of the golden age. After the golden age there will be a guide by the name of Mati, a great hero, teaching the five things to be known. The birth of leaders of the world does not take place in an age of uncertainty, a silver age, or in a final age of strife. They awaken in a golden age. As long as it does not charm the sight, the outer garment may be patterned. With spots like the eyes in a peacock tail, in sets of ten. Ten fingers or three fingers should be between each spot. Decoration otherwise would be attractive to fools. Let the yogi always quell the fire of passion with the water of knowledge. Let the yogi enact the three refuges diligently at dawn, noon, and sunset. When arrows, stones, sticks and such are impelled by a throw and such. One hits, one misses so too good and bad. One has no multiplicity, because of no diversity anywhere. All recipients should be like wind, donors should be like land. If one were multiple, all would be uncreated. The annihilation of the created is a doctrine of speculative thinkers. Like a lamp or seed, it should be homogeneous, so how could it be diverse? That one is multiple is a doctrine of speculative thinkers. Mung beans don't sprout from sesame seed. Rice does not produce barley. Wheat and corn are of different kinds. How can one be multiple?
Panini will be the grammarian, Brihaspati the logician. The founder of materialism will infiltrate the priesthood. Katyana author of treatises, and Yajnavalka too. Matuka the astronomer and so on, will be in the age of strife. Balan, by having done good works in the world for the welfare of creatures, will become a king, a powerful lord of the earth, preserver of all laws. Valmika, Masuraksha, Kautilya, and Ashvalayana will be sages of great fortune in the future. In a later time there will be Siddhartha the Shakya, Bhutanta, Panchachudaka, Vagbaliratha, and Medhavi. Standing on the forest ground, the great Lord Brahma gives an antelope skin, a wooden staff, and a belt. There will be a great yogi named Varajas, a sage, a teacher who guides to liberation. This indeed the trademark of sages. Brahma, together with hundreds of Brahmas and many deities, having caused an antelope skin to fall from the sky upon me, disappears on the spot, having that power. Indra and the deities, and Viradaka and others, give me garments of all colors and a begging bowl on the forest ground. What is valid as a reason for the doctrine of non-origination, be it unproduced, or even if it is produced, will prove non-origination, but only in terms of words. Its cause is absence of knowledge, there's the activation of thoughts. What condition is that in between, as long as it doesn't produce form? As soon as one has passed away, another thought starts. No form remains at all. Based on what will it start? Whence and wherever it starts, thought is a cause of error. When it has not been actualized, how can its instant dissolution be determined? The attainment of yogis, gold, relics of victors, and properties of light cannot be destroyed by a worldly means. The attainment and qualities of Buddhas, their fulfillment of knowledge, are stable. How can mendicancy, practice, and realization be seen momentary? How can forms of castles in the air, magical illusions, and the like be momentary? Nonentities and actualities both come from somewhere. The thought that causes ignorance is a beginningless accumulation of ideas. It is imagined by thinkers to be bound to origination and dissolution. The explanation of Samkhya is twofold. What evolves is from primary matter. In primary matter is found cause, cause fulfills itself. Primary matter is said to differ in quality along with the thing. Diversity of effect and cause is not found in evolution. Just as quicksilver is pure, not polluted by contaminants, so is the receptacle pure, the subject in all creatures. The smell of asafetida, and onion too. The pregnant woman's appearance of pregnancy, the saltiness of what's salted. What does not work like a seed? Where there is otherness, it is in otherness to another. Likewise both are not in both. Existence without appropriation is neither non-existent nor created. The self is to the clusters like a horse, not being a cow. It may be spoken of as created or uncreated, but cannot be said to have inherent existence. Tarnished by erroneous opinion and speculative opinion from reasoning and tradition, they say, the self cannot be ascertained in the act of appropriation, nor otherwise. For it is their false definition. The self imagined in terms of the clusters. Speculative thinkers do not understand them either in terms of oneness or its otherness. As a reflected image appears in a mirror, in water, in an eye, without being the same or different, so is the person in the clusters. What is to be perceived by the meditator with clear ascertainment is the path, truth, and insight. Those who discover these three are liberated from false views. Seen and gone like lightning, 
like a car past a crack in the wall, the evolution of all phenomena should not be construed as it is by the ignorant. The nirvana of the ignorant, by negation of things, deludes the mind due to the assumption of the reality of ultimate insight, regarding it as a fixed condition. One should consider evolution apart from origination and dissolution, apart from existence and non-existence, not bound by description of the described. One should consider evolution without dogmatism, apart from name and form, hidden in inner vision. Both perception of divinities and torments of hells are not there as entities in intermediate existence. They are begun by consciousness. Beings born by maturation, hatched from eggs, fostered by moisture, etc. Coming from intermediate existence, should be considered diverse bodies of life energy. In a state of coming and going. Discourses of dogmatic views opposed to reason and study. Should not be put into practice by the intelligent who are unafflicted and who bring about the destruction of suppositions. The self is ascertained in the beginning. One must distinguish it from the act of appropriation. Others define without ascertainment. It is distinguished as a barren woman's son. I see beings supernaturally as the embodiment of all creatures, detached from the flesh by insight, liberated from the clusters passing through successive states. It is seen in the ugly and the beautiful, as liberated or not liberated, as divine, as without education, as a ground of education. Embodied in association with ways of life, beyond the ken of thinkers. I have transcended the human state, not others, false thinkers. The idea that there is no self occurs. Where does this start from? Why is its emergence not spoken of like a river, a lamp, a seed? When consciousness has not come about, there is no ignorance etc. In its absence there's no consciousness. How could it occur as a continuity? The three times, the timeless, and an inexpressive fifth. This is mentioned by thinkers as known to the Buddhas. Knowledge inexpressible by training and education is the cause of training and education. It grasps knowledge in training and education as voiced by training and education. Where this is so, so is this. These are conditions and not causes. They are spoken of for clarity. Without that there is no agency. Wind makes fire burn as a driving force, not its origin. And fire is blown out by the wind. How can they be proofs of reality? The created and uncreated may be said to be beyond appropriation. How can fire be imagined by the ignorant to be proof of that? Fire is produced among humans by a mutual contribution of forces. Being is ongoing. How can its provenance be construed as like fire? The summoning by the intellect and such of the collection of clusters and elements, without a soul, indeed, goes on constantly along with thought like a caravan. These two luminosities are always apart from effect and cause. Fire is no proof of them but thinkers don't understand. Mind, energies, and nirvana are luminous by nature. Obscured by beginningless errors, they are unaltered, like space. Those who sleep like slumbering elephants, encrusted with dogmatic opinion, shrouded by conceptual consciousness are purified by fire and such. When they have seen him as they are, afflictions are torn apart. Leaving the thicket of analogy, they've gone to the realm of the wise. Once otherness is construed, by distinction of the knowing and the known, the stupid do not understand, and it is called inexpressible. Like the case of a sandalwood kettle drum, where the unsophisticated consider the appearance of sandalwood and aloe wood no different. So is knowledge with poor thinkers. What is eaten on rising is no more than a bowlful. 
the meal should be free of unwholesome elements, things injurious to the mouth and so on. One who keeps this rule properly, pure, intent on discipline, free of fancy, independent, intent on purpose, will illumine the golden religious life. His delusive creation of suppositions of being and non-being, a web of false views, with its impurity, disappears. Along with passion, depravity, and wrath. Free of embellishment, he is also anointed by the hands of the Buddhas. Some dogmatists are confused about the location of cause, others are agitated by assumptions. Others stand by annihilation as ultimate by supposing causeless being. Maturation and evolution pertain to consciousness and intellect. Intellect originates in the receptacle, consciousness is in the intellect. All thoughts start from the receptacle, like waves. Caused by impressions, they occur in conformity with assumptions. Bound into collections that instantly dissolve, holding forms of things thought of. Shape, appearance, and form conform to the intellect, I, and so on. Bound up with beginningless error. The semblance of objects elicited by impressions. Thought appears external. The barrier of dogmatic views. Caused by one, another starts based on it. When a notion occurs, passage through successive states begins. Things are like illusions, dreams, analogous to castles in the air. One should consider one's own imagination like a mirage. Like the reflection of the moon in water. Verity is found by distinction from conventional usage. Accurate knowledge is based on that. And so are the supreme concentrations. Such as the magical and the heroic progress. From entering into the stages one gains super knowledges and masteries. And a blissful consecrated state of knowledge like magic. When thought ceases, seeing the world at rest. One attains the stage of joy. And they attain the stage of Buddha. By cessation of dependence, like a jewel reflecting all colors. One does the tasks people need do like a reflection in water. Free of suppositions of reality or unreality, being or non-being, or both or neither either, the seventh stage is beyond. Listeners and solitary illuminates. Those who have seen the truth firsthand should be shown the great vehicle. By which the actual stages are purified, free of externalist dogma. Disappearance of imagination without falling into nihilism. A principle like rabbit horn, turtle hair, a wish-fulfilling pearl, should be taught to the liberated. If it is as right by reasoning as it is text by the book, then the reasoning must be right and should not be construed otherwise. Sight, action, and craving are so based on ignorance. Intellect in sight and form as such is the intellect of one confused. 